7,600 pounds, basically on the nose. A Salem dual living room super slide coming in on trade here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Treated the folks well. They RV'd a lot more than they thought, and they swapped this up for a big, like, quad slide Jayco North Point fifth wheel. Just basically improving their camping experience all the way around. This one's going to give us big living room, dual power awnings, and a surprisingly spacious bedroom. What you're going to get here is just a big dual opposing super slide living room space and something that is at 7,600 pounds potentially half ton towable. What you'll have to watch when it comes to half tons is that how really sort of like the length of this RV interacts and plays against your vehicle. Something people don't think about is the shorter the vehicle, the easier it is for a trailer to push it around. And uh, a longer trailer like this, you're going to want a heavier duty truck, something like, you're like, oh, I can tow 8,500 pounds, I'm fine, sure, but can you handle something that is uh, a little bit longer like this one? You see that you've actually got a uh, fireplace and entertainment directly across from those dual recliners, and windows out the wazoo uh, is the technical term. I actually looked up the old brochure for it, and it was like, windows out the wazoo. I was like, oh, wow, that's wild. Funny thing is, I actually like the layout of this one a little bit better than the current version of 27RE. Um, the uh, the current version has a now standard Versa lounge. I understand why Wildwood standardized that, but it never made sense to me. Now, I just said Wildwood, and obviously this is a Salem. If you're not aware, Salem and Wildwood are literally the exact same thing with a different skin color on the outside and different decals for the naming. That's it. It's the exact same camper. Something else I want to point out for you, because we're a Wildwood dealer here at Halo, so I know my way around this very well. This right here is about the same size fridge that you have today. It's close to 11 cubic foot of cold storage, which is awesome. It cools very quickly. But it is a 110 residential only refrigerator. That is not 12 volt. That is not propane. Um, so, you know, it does have an inverter, so you can keep it running in transit. And the previous owners must have spent a little bit of time kind of unplugged because it does have uh, two batteries on the front of this RV. But uh, overall, you know, there are some benefits to, to both styles, both designs. It just it doesn't matter what you're looking for. The thing is, this one coming in at that pre-owned price tag is going to be hard to beat. Oh, this! By the way, here is an awesome thing. If you have overhead flipping cabinet doors, but you're tired of them falling constantly, like they don't have gas struts, a little baggage door hold back right there with a command strip is the simplest, easiest thing to do. Because one, it's easy to install. Two, you don't have to screw anything. Because the last thing you want to do is try to take a screwdriver and screw gun and go and you know fry the wiring for your light up here. Well, now you don't have to worry about that whatsoever. You may also notice how this does have roller shades all around these big windows. Dinette can fold down into a sleeper. Sofa can also fold into a sleeper, and you can see there's a big drawer built right into it as well. Now, at a glance here, bathroom doesn't appear to be anything special. I do like the larger radius shower for elbow room, but this is a six foot nine tall camper, so a little more headroom in the shower for a taller person like me. But what you haven't really seen yet is any sort of significant bathroom storage space. Like you see a little there below the sink, but like, is that it? And the short answer to that is no, no it's not. This actually has a very good linen cabinet over here next to the shower. It's just at a kind of a tricky angle for me to try to get this thing into still photos. And I mentioned how this thing has a surprisingly spacious bedroom. Thing is, uh, this floor plan, it kind of came out very shortly after uh, the Salem Wildwood Group did some redesigning. And when they rearranged their front end, it created like almost an extra foot here in the bedroom. So that is currently a Denver Mattress Camp Queen. Nice pillow top. Actually, it's a nice mattress, but it's a short queen. And now if you're not as tall as me, that's probably going to be fine. But if you're taller than me and you want to swap into a true residential queen, you have plenty of room here to do so. And actually, you know what I thought about is that'd be a perfect place for the uh, for my dog's pet bed. That way he could not sleep in it and he could lay up there between me and my wife, somehow occupying two-thirds of the entire mattress, even though he's only a 14-pound little dog. Hopping outside here into the front storage compartment, a couple cool things up front. That is the inverter. So if you need to keep that refrigerator running, that residential-only fridge off battery power, you've got the uh, equipment there to do it. Now, don't have a heart attack because you're like, oh, something's wrong, it's all busted up. No, not at all. What we are looking at here is that is the access panel to the water heater. In case you had notice on the outside of the weather today, it's cold. The RV is winterized. That is the access panel to be able to get to all of that. Now, I try, whenever I 
you know, go through a used RV, I try to find something that's like wrong with it or not perfect or, you know, a scuff or a decal or blemish or whatever. And I'm really coming up empty on this one. It's in some pretty good condition. The only glitch I found in this one is that the swinging bedroom privacy door is kind of clipping a little piece of trim that frankly I can see all that needs to happen is one screw needs to get retightened a little bit to fix that. I can't, there's there's nothing, I can't find problems. I can't find anything wrong with it, you know? It has a power tongue jack, power awning, and four corner power stabilizer jacks. The awning and the corner jacks are actually remote controlled. It, the RV has a remote on the inside uh, as you leave the entry door. Well, that would make it an exit door now, wouldn't it? Regardless, there's a remote control right there where you can operate these things. I'm such an idiot. Big windows, lots of light, but you do have those privacy shades if you need to pull them down. The roof is walkable. The floor is tongue and groove plywood. The walls are uh, 16 inch on center studs on average. Spare tire doesn't look like it's seen the light of day. And I want to clarify something I said a second ago. I said the awning of the RV is a power awning. This actually has dual power awnings for max patio space. Those stable steps right there and that extra large door rounded out for kind of easy come and go. And what you're looking for, I don't care like if you're getting rid of the family bunkhouse or if you're doing something like uh, getting your first camper or if you're looking for like a seasonal spot, you're not gonna tow it. If you want us to deliver it and park it for you, those are all kinds of things that we can do for you here at Halet RV. We have a, oh, there's their new RV leaving out. Look at that big bad beauty they're swapping into. They're gonna have a great time. But our team over there in that parts and service department, they, you know, we can we can coordinate things like deliveries for you. If you need hitching, we can do all that. We can do anything you need. All we need is a fair shot of working with you when you're ready. So if you appreciate this video, hit that subscribe button, follow along with us here at Halet RV, and let us know what you think about the camper in the comments below. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.